Om Tat Sat. Welcome to Gyan Bhakti. We are currently exploring the scripture Mysticism of Srimad Bhagavatam. Commentary is by my Guruji, Swami Jyotirmayananji Maharaj. Narrated by myself, Swami Nikhilananda. So we are currently on a very exciting story, The Birth of Lord Krishna, which we had started yesterday. And we had uh, said... Vasudeva was taking baby Krishna in the Jamuna river and as he was going it was pitch dark he did not know but as if guided by a mystical force he kept going in the uh, deep waters and it was also raining with Sheshnaga serpent giving protection to both the father Vasudev and the baby Krishna. But as he was going in the water, the water kept on rising. It uh, At one point, it almost rose to Vasudevaji's nose and he was afraid he may drown. But he kept having that faith and kept going. And then um, all that was happening was that Yamuna River was so excited to touch the Lord's feet that it kept rising because Lord Vasudeva was holding little Krishna on his head in the basket. So Lord Krishna eventually realized what was happening and he gently put his toe down on the water. And as soon as he did that, Yamuna river was totally satiated, satisfied, contented, and she calmed down after that nectar of the blessings of touching the Lord's toe. So that is how with his faith, he crossed that river, his father, Vasudevji, because Krishna is still a little infant, a cute little baby sitting in the, in the basket for most people to look at, not knowing who he really is. So having crossed the river, arriving at Gokula, Vasudeva brought that infant into the home of his friend, Nanda. Nanda was his old time friend who was the chief of one of those the, the villages there. At the very time of Krishna's birth in Mathura, Maya Shakti, according to the instructions of Lord Vishnu, had been born as the baby daughter of Nanda's wife, Yashoda. However, Yashoda and Nanda and the other villagers nearby were all unconscious due to divine influence and were unaware of the birth of the female child. Vasudeva entered secretly into that home and exchanged the babies. He left Krishna there besides the sleeping Yashoda and returned the way he had come with the girl child in the basket. <coughs> The moment he entered the prison back in Mathura, the gates swung shut, all the locks came back. When he entered his own cell, the fetters fell on his hands and feet. Everything became as it was before, all part of divine Leela. The guards woke up and the baby started crying. Naturally, they thought that the eighth child was just born and immediately informed Kansa. Kansa came to Devaki's cell, tumbling from sleep and staggering because he was so afraid of the eighth child due to the um, Akashwani or the heavenly word that he had heard that that would be the cause of his death. There Devaki pleaded before her cousin Kamsa. She said, O oh, Kans, how can you be afraid of a girl child? How powerful you are. You have deprived me of all my children. Let me have this one child. However, Kans did not listen to Devki and he snatched the infant from her arms, thrashing it against a rock with the idea of destroying the tiny girl. But the infant flew out of his hand and assumed her true identity and form, that of an infulgent eight-armed Devi, adorned with celestial ornaments and holding special divine weapons in each of her hands. After being adored by other celestial beings, the Devi cried out to Kans, You fool! The one who is going to destroy you has been born elsewhere. Thus saying, the Devi disappeared. So this is the beautiful scene where in the prison, Vasudeva and uh, Devaki both saw the dazzling form of the Devi and Kansa also form, saw that form, but he was very scared at that time. 
So let's look at the mystical meaning. The events that occur in the wedding chariot in which Devaki and Vasudeva ride, driven by Kans, have a special mystic significance for an aspirant. The entire setting is a highly dramatized portrayal of the human personality in the state of ignorance. The chariot is our personality. The two important aspects of which are the jiva or individual soul, which is represented by Vasudeva and the intellect represented by Devi. So every one of us has a Vasudev and a Devaki within us. Again, our intellect, our buddhi being Devaki and our Atma being Vasudeva, the soul in this case. In the state of ignorance, the chariot is being driven by ego, Kamsa. So Kamsa is our ego driving the chariot. But there comes a stage when spiritual aspiration dawns and a challenge is sent to the ego. That stage is represented by the heavenly voice that says, the eighth child will kill you. So now the spiritual journey has started and Kans, the ego, now has to look for shelter and find a way to save himself. This is the mystical meaning. As the result of countless good deeds done in past lives, Krishna, the incarnation of the divine self, is born in the heart of the individual as aspiration for God realization. So if any one of you feels that God realization is the goal of your life, you have given birth to Krishna. That is the real prasad, the real nectar of the bhakti, of the devotion, of, the, uh, of our effort of this human body. So many souls come to this planet earth and just leave thinking this world is all that is. And yet there, is, there are mysteries upon mysteries we have to unfold and it is the secret of our divine self, the spirit, the atma and uniting it with God that is the true purpose of our life, not just to accumulate money, name, fame, all those things just maintain our practical existence. But this one gives you mukti or liberation and terminating forever from the meshes of life and death. But mostly people, um, very few souls are pulled towards this level of bhakti and magnetism because a lot of heavy price has to be paid. But it is so joyous, so lovely that till you go through it, you will not realize it and uh, like destroying any vice it takes effort time and dedication so this is what sages and saints try to do they constantly try to bring satsanga in our lives so we can feel those vibrations and move in that direction. So even in the presence of countless obstacles and adversities, the child aspiration grows undaunted by the relentless effort of Kansa, ego backed up by ignorance to destroy him. So constantly while Krishna is going, growing, ego will constantly try, try to kill Krishna because it doesn't want to leave this comfortable world of names and forms and material things even though it is transient and uh, temporary. Each aspect of the story of Krishna's birth becomes a basis for an aspirant's meditation. Just as Krishna incarnates in a prison with darkness all around, similarly God manifests deep within your heart, deep in the unconscious, to remove all obstacles and lead you to enlightenment. But we have to have that level of bhakti, faith, devotion, sincerity, and our ability to continue to walk on this holy path and be prepared for the tests and tribulations that come along the way. Have Hanuman-like faith, strength, Shakti, and then amazing things will happen to all of us, to all of us sincere souls. So with this, we conclude our satsanga for today, and I will see you in tomorrow's satsanga. As you can see, these stories are deeply profound, very mystical and enough to get us to enlightenment if we are sincere.
This is Swami Nikhilananda. Om Tat Sat.